Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 16 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we're going to be reviewing Apatosaurus. As always, George, what is the fossil record on this dinosaur? Pretty good. In fact, it was so good that it got mistaken for Brontosaurus and then back again. In 2018, they determined an Apatosaurus skeleton was actually a Brontosaurus skeleton. It was actually also one of the first long neck dinosaurs put on display. So just to clarify, the Apatosaurus skull was misclassified as the Brontosaurus skull? Well, see, that's the issue. They didn't have the skull. So the skeleton that they had was from the neck down. They labeled it as Brontosaurus, making it a new dinosaur. But then other paleontologists said, no, that's just a Apatosaurus, and you're trying to pass it off as a new dinosaur. But then there was a study in 2018 I determined that it was different enough to be Brontosaurus and not Apatosaurus. Okay, George, we have five figures to look at today, including two from Holland Good. Where would you like to get started? Let's start with Safari. Okay, so this, this Safari figure, I think, is going to be the smallest rear view today. And let's start with the head. This guy, or this girl, has some eyeliner action going on right now. I do like that the eyes are very clearly defined and they have this golden color. The nostrils are on the top of the head, which... We're not entirely sure whether they're up here or down here, since the nostril slits go all the way up from there. Looking down at the neck, we see a lot of skin folds. See how the skin's kind of hanging off? That's sort of new. I haven't really seen that in a lot of sauropods figures. Looking at the feet, they have that half moon shape. And wouldn't you know it, there's our little cloaca friend there. The tail kind of does this S shape, which is really nice, and it comes to a tip point. I gotta say, this one has a lot of skin folds, which is just very unique. Very much the opposite of shrink wrapping, which is when the musculature and the skin are pressed up against the, the bones, which in this case does not happen. This is one healthy dinosaur. Question, George. The tail has quite severe S-curve to it. Realistically, would it have had that much flexibility within its tail? Oh, that's a good question. So there was a certain point in the tails of sauropods where they are mostly just nubs of bone and that's closer to the end part of the tail when you get closer to the base part of the tail they're more interlocked so their motion is limited but as you get further away you would see more flexibility although i think the flexibility might have started a little too early here i'd see it more happening towards the end so realistic or not I'd say they took a little bit of liberty with the flexibility of the tail. Which figure would you like to look at next, George? Let's look at the Popo one. All right, this is the Popo Apatosaurus. Oh, this one has its mouth open, and you can see its crayon-like teeth. They were about the same size and shape of, as a crayon, which were perfect for stripping leaves off of trees. And again, these nostrils are also spaced between the eyes, and the eyes are nicely detailed as well. And we see those skin folds again. So... These might be because the neck bones or vertebrae of Apatosaurus are very robust, very thick, very chunky compared to other sauropods. And speaking of chunky, we see a nice uh, chunkiness to the middle part of the body. Oh, but its feet do not pass the half moon shape check. They do have that thumb claw, which is pretty consistent with the Apatosaur family, but they had a little bit extra on the foot pad. The back feet look okay though, and there is no cloaca, but I'm sure that this area is intended for that purpose probably. Going back to the tail, good musculature, and see this, this is a bit more believable to the curvature of the tail, because this is where they start narrowing and being more flexible than the interlocked caudal or tail vertebrae, as they're called. I'd say this is this is a pretty, pretty good one. So George, there is a clear ridge line running along the back. Is there any evidence for that in real life? Yes. So they had a very pronounced neural spines around their shoulders and down their back. So I'd say this is pretty, pretty accurate to what we see in their skeletons. At least they're not sticking out of the skin <laughs> like those uh, bony ridges, but these are covered by skin. So they're they're pretty consistent with their neural spines and their skeletons. And then how about the ridges on the underside of the neck? What are those representing and are those realistic? So they have these things called cervical ribs, which we have like a couple of in our necks. And it helps 
transition to the ribs and they do get thicker the further down you go so this might be signaling where each of those are located because they would have muscles and air sacs running through them so the air sacs are spaces in the bones of dinosaurs that help make them lighter that are interconnected with their lungs so possibly realistic possibly realistic okay george let's look at the figure from namu whose name is bastion or Bastin. 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 Or if you're a fan of, what's that Disney movie with? The... Oh, Beauty and the Beast. Yes. Beauty and the Beast. Gaston. Gaston. Biast... Biaston. You know, I'm just going to call it Gaston. Yeah. <laughs> it's from Namu. <laughs> <laughs> this is a monster. I could barely fit it into this frame. I'm going to just scoot it back so we start from head to tail like we've done with the other ones. This face... I gotta say, I've seen this face before. It looks just like the Apatosaurus from Jurassic World. I know I said that in the Brontosaurus video, but this one is a much, much more detailed version of that. Uh, you can't see any teeth. It's got lips, which is pretty cool. And the nostrils oh, are closer to the tip of the snout. So again, we don't really know exactly where they were placed. Their nasal slits go all the way from the middle of their head down to the middle of their snout. So I guess this is a little too far. Going down to their neck, you can see that muscle definition. It's pretty neat. They also have a little bit of striping going on, but if you look a little bit closer, you can kind of see these uh, little folds that are similar to the previous Papa one. If we go down and we look at their feet, oh no, it does not pass the test. This is not a half moon shape, so already points off for that, but these are very nicely defined thumb claws. As we go further down, their back feet are accurate, very nice. No cloaca though, so I'm pretty sad about that. As we move down to the tail, you are going to notice that it has a pretty long tail. It tapers to the tip. And a cool thing about this uh, figure is it's so large that its tail actually detaches a little bit. You just shimmy it together and it attaches right back on with a little force. You got you to gotta really get it in there, but it attaches and... There we go. See, all it needs is a little elbow grease, but I would say I really like this one. In fact, I'm going to be honest. I have this one. I have this one at home. I wanted a sauropod or a long neck dinosaur that was big. And this is big. If we look at the ridge line, George, we see that it goes from no spines in the front to spines along the back half of the figure. Realistic or not? I would say no. We don't have proof that these ridges along the back here would have stuck out. Two things worth noting on this figure. It's on the expensive side. And then secondly, it's actually hollow. So you're you're expecting it to have heft in the hand when you lift it up and it's hollow. So it's quite a surprise the first time you lift it up. I will admit, I, I didn't even notice. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's because I have it already. Oh, so okay. it's just like, you can cut that out. <laughs> nope, leaving it in. Okay, George, let's move on to the two figures from Holland Good, which you actually have never seen in real life correct never seen these you keep surprising me with new dinosaurs each time i come on here so my goodness this is another big one all right let's take a close-up look at you and look at that you've got a nicely shaped apatosaurus skull that is beautiful we do have a pretty good idea what their skulls look like the nostrils are down just like the other figures and oh man Look at this little ridge on the bottom of the neck. It reminds me of a chicken. You know, the little... Um, waddle? Yeah, the waddle. That's what it's called. It's got a little waddle action going on. Very well-defined neck with skin folds. And I'm not entirely sure what those are. They kind of look like a... <laughs> you ever see a pig um, with with babies? And, you know, the babies are trying to suckle up. Nipples. There you They're go. Nipples. <laughs> they look like neck nipples. Oh, God. Neck nipples. Don't make that the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's guaranteed. Neck nipples? <laughs> I think that's guaranteed. <laughs> oh, and you see those neural spine ridges over here, or osteoderms. I think these would be more osteoderms because they don't follow the neural spines. And these, oh, they could just get sharper the further down you go. Let's look at the underside. And Oh, thank goodness. Look at that beautiful half moon shape. So that is that is a relief to see. The bottom foot pads. This is actually very interesting. I've never seen the the same color as the top on the bottom. They, they really follow through with that color. The counter shading is really nice. We move on to the tail. It goes from a nice 
thick muscular base to a more round tail which i really like look at that little little flick at the end kind of like our little artistic touch i gotta say i really like this and this one has a heft to it that the other one didn't have the end of the tail is almost in a complete circle would the tail have had that much flexibility they probably would have had the flexibility to curve but going all the way around i don't think they would have it looks extreme to me it does okay george let's look at the second figure from holland good oh man look at this paint it's just wow you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of like a desert lizard. Like this is a lizard or a dinosaur built for living in arid regions. You can really see the the details a lot better with this lighter color and the darker color, but they weren't as easy to see. It looks like it's the exact same pose as the other one, simply different color scheme. Yes. I'm not seeing any differences. Neither do I, but man, I do see the um, they really like their pink in this one. The claws are easier to see, too, because the back claws on the other one, I wasn't able to see very well defined. They're a bit of a different color here. A very, very nice looking dinosaur. Okay, George, mugshot time. Looking at the head side by side, what's jumping out at you? The details on them are defined in different ways. For example, on the non moo one, it's going more for a movie approach, how we've interpreted Apatosaurus and famous movies like Jurassic World, whereas the Holland Good is going more for that scientifically accurate approach. The Popple one is pretty solid. It's been unchanged in our perception in the scientific community. The Safari figure is more akin to what we used to know of Apatosaurus. In fact, it's kind of like the old idea of what their skulls would look like, a little bit droopy, kind of mopey but if i had to choose the best one out of these it'd probably be the holland good it's the most up to date it is not shrink wrapped it's not too chubby either it's just right in the head department okay george let's take a look at the skin texture and scale side by side which one's the most accurate i think there's only one that's accurate in fact there's only one that has actual scales now that i can tell it's the holland good one the other uh, dinosaur figures have wrinkled skin uh, which is very much what we see in large animals today like elephants rhinos and hippos but the holland good one has scales all throughout so i would say that's my top pick and then let's take a look at the tail side by side george which one's the most accurate i would have to say the papo apatosaurus is the most accurate one it tapers at just the right amount it's not doing some crazy s or loop-de-loop -loop shape and it also comes to a clearly defined terminating point or tip I would say that is the most accurate. Okay, now for the tough decision, George. Which one is the most scientifically accurate? Out of all the ones we reviewed, I'd have to say this one. It passes the half moon shape. It doesn't have crazy spines. I mean, it does have some, but it's not to the point where it's a deal breaker. The tail is, aside from the circle shape, the tail is accurate. And um, overall, it's very proportionate. It looks very, very apatosaur <laughs> You're not just picking it because it has neck nipples? Definitely not picking it because it just has neck nipples, but it really sets it apart from the rest. Well, now we're going to make it a little bit harder decision because clearly, George, this would be the one you would add to your collection if money was no object. Mm -hmm. There is a large price discrepancy in a lot of these models. The Holland Good and the Namu are about the same price are six times more expensive than the lowest price Safari LTD model. The Papo model is twice as expensive as the Safari LTD one, but three times cheaper than the Holland Good models. If you're on a budget, as most of us are, would you find the Safari LTD and the Papo models acceptable at their price points? I would find the Papo one acceptable at those price points. But then again, my priorities are different. I, <laughs> I can go without a meal um, for a dinosaur. I don't recommend that for you guys. I would say they, they are acceptable based on their scientific accuracy uh, for, for their prices. So that was a lot of information, but George has determined that he would go with the Holland Good figures as the most scientifically accurate. The Papo figure would be your budget option in this case. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Can we do that over again? The, mm -hmm. You just—I yeah. I was confused by what you were saying. I was like, confused too. Yeah, let's so. do it again. Um,